Today we're going to look at Canvas and the ePortfolio, which is an amazing tool. I highly recommend it. There are lots of advantages to using Canvas, and this is definitely one of them. So let's go into Canvas. This is a course that I'm in as a participant or student or learner or whatever you want to call me. Going to go into account. This is the course, but I need to go in, in order to get this going. Click on account and here I am. Notice uh, everything else is also open, but I don't need to pay attention to that. Scroll down until I get to ePortfolio, which is right here under setting. Going to go into that. So you get a chance to see what's there. I've started this and notice I've got two actually. Oh my gosh, I noticed that I started one in 2012. You know, I'm always amazed by the accounts that I have in various places. And when I created them, my goodness, I created this in 2012. That's 10 years ago over 10 years ago because it's March 2nd and we're in November 1. This is the one I created on November 9th, which is a few days ago. Just curious what I have in my portfolio from 2012, if anything. Oh, I see that I haven't really done much. I just kind of opened it. I notice I have home and reflections. Let's see if there's anything here, but I didn't add anything. So, so much for that. Let me go back to uh, my account and the other portfolio, which I created a few days ago. It's called Learning Management Systems because I decided to compare. Well, you'll see what I wrote here. I've got seven pages so far. There's a wizard here on how to get started, which may help. And then you can go to your actual portfolio. Let me create another one just to take you through it before I will show you mine, which I made public. Now you don't have to go public. You can stay private. Notice other people can also add comments and you can add your comments too to whatever you write, which is a great way to reflect on whatever you've done. All right, so notice what I have here on the left. Okay, so uh, it's called Learning Management System, and I've organized it in such a way that I have a purpose, background, Moodle, Canvas, Google Classroom, and conclusion, after uh, thinking about comparing Canvas and Moodle, I decided that I actually wanted to also compare other LMSs. So I looked up Edmodo and found out that it doesn't exist anymore. They've uh, deleted it, the whole thing, with millions of uh, users. And then I thought of Schoology that I used in the past, but now it's only for K-12 and I didn't see any free versions. So we're stuck with three uh, free ones, Moodle, Canvas, and Google Classroom. Let me start a new one, a fresh new one, just for you. So let me go back to my account over here. But you can add to mine if you like. That would be great. And I'm going to go to ePortfolio and start a new one. And that's how easy it is. You simply click on Create an ePortfolio, and you can have as many as you wish. Isn't that amazing? Click on it, and then you give it a title. So this time I'm going to call it Demo, just a name. I can decide to make it public or not. If I tick this off, it'll become public. So do I want to do that? I always like to make things public because I like to get other people's opinions, but it's up to you. And then I'm going to click on Make ePortfolio. 
Now it says make, and it doesn't say save or anything like that. So that may be confusing for some. I think they may wish to make it save, but okay, you're actually making an ePortfolio. All right, so then you've got your getting the wizard or go to the actual portfolio. I personally don't like wizards, but notice what comes up once I make it home and then I can organize or set my ePortfolio settings. I'm going to go to the actual one because that's how I work. Go to the actual one. And then notice what I have here more than what I imagined. I also have a welcome. And then of course back to the dashboard. Or organize sections and ePortfolio settings. If I go to settings, which is in second place, notice I can set the title again. Let's go into organize sections. Once you get it set up, you're going to love it because if you like to reflect like I do, you will love it. All right. So here, when I clicked on, I hope you noticed that when I clicked on add, I can add a section. Notice the home is the first section that they're going to appear on the left. And then click on done, and then I can add input. So let me add a section. Click on add section. Remember the sections will appear on the left, and then you can add information in the center. So I'm going to call it week one, okay, maybe, for this demo. And then I'm going to hit done. It's really intuitive once you get the hang of it, but you need to uh, actually really pay attention at the beginning. Done. Okay, now I'll see week one. Notice here on my left menu. There's week one. All right, so what do I do with this? Notice the uh, setting icon. The setting icon means that you, if you want to change the name. You can move it, you can rename it. And I think that's really important information for you. You can do that. So if you don't like what you added, or if you decide that you're talking about one thing and the name doesn't reflect back, change the name. So flexibility is what I like. I love flexibility. So you can rename it. Instead of home, I'm going to call it introduction. I don't like the word home here. Introduction. And then Notice, don't just leave it hanging. You'll need to hit done editing, and that's how it's done. By the way, feel free to ask questions as you go on this video. So let's go into introduction and uh, add to it. Okay, so we are on introduction. And notice under welcome, there's nothing there because I didn't add anything to the welcome. And you don't have to. You can actually remove it if you like. Okay, so there's the welcome. By going into edit this page, because all the links on the left, the menu, are actually pages. It's like a blog. It is, in fact, a blog, but they call it an ePortfolio. But it's set up as a blog if you're familiar with WordPress. It's very similar. Going to hit edit this page. We're on the welcome and it says nothing, but I don't really like the page name welcome. So instead of well, well, you know, maybe welcome to myself. So I could write purpose. Okay. And then I'll leave it at that. And then I'll write the purpose of this ePortfolio, you can call it a blog if you like, is to demonstrate how to use ePortfolio on Canvas. Moodle also has ePortfolios. I'm not sure about Google Classroom. All right, so that's what I have. Let me scroll down. Scroll down because you need to save this. 
save page. That's pretty easy, right? You can also preview it before so that I have purpose. Next, I'm going to go to the introduction. And then again, I hope you got the idea because I think it's quite clear once you get started. So don't be afraid. Edit this page and then I'll edit. Now you might be asking, well, Nelly, what about the feedback? Where is that? I think I got the wrong one. Purpose there. Here is where you can add comments. Thank you for making e-portfolio, I don't know who I'm talking to, here, folios on Canvas. This is for Canvas, in case anybody ever reads this. Can this. And then add comment. This is great. If it's public, then other people can add their comments. And that's it. Hope this has been of help. Let's go back to the introduction. The purpose of this is to demonstrate. No comments yet. Uh, maybe if I make it public, you can ask your questions. So let me go back into the settings. I'll make it public so you can ask your questions right here. That might help both of us understand the process a bit better. So here, oh, I did make it public. All right, update portfolio. Now it's public. So I'll need to share this link with you so that you can... Um, also view my portfolio even though i think it's i'm in as a student here but let me see if i can share this with you thank you for watching there's the uh, back to portfolio thank you for watching you can also by the way download the contents after you finish it, so you can take it with you. You don't, it, once you're finished with Canvas or you're finished with the course, you can download it if you want to know more about that. It's a zip file, so it works for both uh, Apple and um, Windows, Microsoft operating systems. Thank you for watching. Questions are welcome. Bye for now.